today I will speak about uh, ruthenium dioxide, which we start to work with. And um, yes, I will try to put uh, our samples um, in context of the existing uh, data. And it was done um, again with, in collaboration between many uh, uh, institutes and people. And mostly I would like to highlight the work of, of Ruben Gonzalez Betancourt, who is our uh, uh, student um, shared between Prague and Dresden. And also Teresa uh, and Louis, who are our colleagues from, from, from Leibniz Institute. So here, let me start uh, or connect to, to the previous talks uh, by a slide which you saw in um, many variations uh, uh, during the couple of last week, uh, last, last days. And I, I still think that this is important to highlight um, uh, the, the advantages of the, of the alter magnets. We know um, that the ferromagnets are the, the, the ordered materials which are having uh, these beneficial things as the time reversal symmetry in the, in the band structure. They have the spin polarization and there is a well-known GMR effect. However, the net magnetization and uh, the metallic character of the ferromagnets are also uh, presenting like a big uh, roadblock for, for many experiments. And the antiferromagnets, they, they overcome uh, some of these um, problems by having no net magnetization, which makes them, uh, um, which makes them favorable for either higher density um, integration, but also, um, um, also for, for uh, other, other uh, advantages. And also the, the wider material choice is one thing which um, I think makes antiferromagnets uh, very actively studied and uh, very exciting in last uh, decade or two decades, um, uh, because they are not only metallic, but there is many insulators, intrinsic semiconductors, and uh, thinking about how much effort we spend to make uh, uh, semiconductors ferromagnetic, then the antiferromagnetic uh, semiconductors are, are already given to us by, by nature. And then alter magnets, who we uh, learned that they are combining these two advantages and bringing some additional um, properties which are uh, unprecedented in ferromagnets and antiferromagnets, make them really um, very attractive for, for almost every magnetism-related field which we, can, which we can think about. And um, here just the summary of the, of the, of the advantages. So um, that, that was mentioned already many times, and now as an experimentalist, of course, we think how to experimentally verify the, the, the alter magnetism and what, how to kind of tap into all these advantages which they have. And uh, um, we learned about uh, several techniques um, during this workshop. And of course, the direct imaging of this uh, uh, spin splitting in the electronic bands would be, would be the nicest uh, direct evidence. And uh, I saw these talks of, of this uh, uh, of, of uh, gentlemen from Hans Joachim and, and uh, the poster <laughs> of, of uh, Jura Krempanski <laughs> and <laughs> poster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, all these things, I, I really am super happy to see them because this, this really uh, uh, shows already some, some direct evidence. And then we had like a big uh, uh, block or uh, several talks about uh, effects which are uh, having interface of alter magnet and, and other material. And we had represented all these three groups which showed so beautiful results, uh, mostly related to some spin torque on, from the alter magnet to, uh, to the adjacent ferromagnet. But uh, we saw that how much work uh, Arnab and all the others had to disentangle it, all these angular dependencies and all these uh, different directions. And uh, yeah, this comes from the rich physics of this interface between the, the alter magnet and the, <laughs> the ferromagnet. And uh, um, then there is this uh, effect, which we also heard about, the anomalous Hall effect, which, which comes as a consequence of the time reversal symmetry breaking in the, in the band structure. And the, the advantage is that we need basically single layer of material. <laughs> we just need to uh, put uh, like simple set uh, uh, electric current in one direction, two wires spent particular to it, and somehow being able to, to manipulate the magnetic order vector. And in, um, it, it's also good to sort of use it because it was believed to be absent, completely absent in, in the uh, collinear system. So, so in case we can show that it's present in now collinear magnets, then it's a good, a good hint that we have something to do with the, with the alter magnets. So um, these uh, alter magnetic materials which we heard about and which show anomalous Hall effect, uh, they, they kind of all have the common thing that they break the, the symmetry by the crystal structure, by the environment. 
And we had a talk from Dominic, which uh, showed that the mangan telluride <laughs> is a perfect example, which when one uh, rotates and shifts the, this, this tellurium cages up, then it uh, breaks the, uh, the, the respective symmetry. And indeed, experimentally, um, uh, we could observe the, the, the spontaneous anomalous uh, Hall effect there. Then uh, Sebastian showed that in the mangan 5 silicon 3 thin films, where they are um, epitaxially constrained to the hexagonal uh, unit cell of the silicon substrate, again, it, uh, um, it breaks, the, uh, breaks the symmetry. And uh, like here, I showed that unlike the bulk uh, mangan 5 silicon 3, which is the orthonombic uh, uh, phase, the hexagonal phase is fulfilling the altar magnetic criteria. And again, this uh, leads to the, to the existence of the, of the anomalous uh, Hall effect, which Sebastian was showing. And then we had a lot of talks about uh, ruthenium dioxide, which somehow crystallized as the model alter magnet, which, um, which has like this beautiful rutile structure and uh, uh, which was studied by, by uh, many groups. And we heard a lot of, about it. And uh, um, we didn't hear uh, about the anomalous Hall effect in this particular material. And here the pioneering work was done by, by uh, Feng, which I will summarize. And then uh, uh, we uh, started by, by studying this material by trying to confirm and um, <laughs> uh, even maybe push the, the anomalous whole data of the, of the, uh, of the Jig Value team. So the ruthenium dioxide material, again, I think that we heard enough about this material, but let me just summarize a few um, few kind of uh, pre alter magnetic uh, results, let's, let's call it like that, uh, where uh, this material uh, 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 was known to be, to be grown on different substrates by different methods. Um, it's, uh, it's oxide, but uh, metallic, it's a well-known metallic. And uh, it fulfills exactly this uh, time reversal symmetry breaking in the case space, as I showed on the, on the previous slides and we saw many times. And few of the um, few of the papers, key papers, which I would like to mention here, that it was studied by the neutron experiments, and it was shown to have the uh, the, the easy axis along the O01. This I will then um, mention because this is very important for our experiments. And uh, also, there was a Riggs experiment performed by 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 Zhu and others, uh, which uh, identified that the critical temperature is uh, above the room temperature and uh, the collinear magnetic order was confirmed. Then there is a, a two or maybe more papers which, <laughs> which looked at the ARPES or theory and they, they kind of uh, showed that the, the large spin hole conductivity was, was uh, predicted in this, um, in this material. And also one paper um, from Uhida group which uh, which kind of showed that uh, uh, under some uh, particular strain, this, this material can be even supraconductive below, below like some 1.7 Kelvin. So um, now um, after this um, uh, general characterization, so how is it with the anomalous Hall effect in, in, in our ruthenium dioxide? And uh, this was the LIBOR um, uh, first identified and model material where LIBOR showed that it can indeed show uh, anomalous uh, Hall effect, um, anomalous crystal Hall effect, when the <laughs> nail vector um, in theory can be pointing in uh, any direction. And uh, for example, when it points along 100 or 110, indeed there is a whole finite Hall conductivity. However, in reality, as I said, the nail vector uh, in samples points along the 001 direction where the no anomalous Hall is uh, expected. And therefore, one has to um, get the, the, the nail vector out of this uh, 001 direction and have some finite projection in the 001 plane. And so this also means, unfortunately, that in this material we cannot expect a spontaneous present in zero magnetic field uh, anomalous Hall effect. So what it means for us experimentalists, so this means that we have to um, make sure that the nail vector is somehow away from the 001 direction. And uh, this means that we have to apply the magnetic field somehow in the 001 plane. And in that case, then uh, uh, we magnetically field induce a small uh, net magnetization, which can couple to the, to the external magnetic field. And then the resulting signal is uh, from the uh, alter magnetism or originating anomalous Hall effect or crystal Hall effect 
Then, of course, small uh, from the um, weak field induced uh, ferromagnetism or this weak field induced uh, moment which, which develops there and the ordinary Hall effect. And um, yeah, it sounds maybe complicated, and I will go through that um, in details on, in the rest of the talk. But I also want to highlight that um, um, this sort of anisotropic behavior, uh, which, uh, which makes it like very strongly crystal dependent, where the anomalous Hall effect will be present or will not be present, we can um, switch it off by different crystal direction. This is very distinct from ferromagnets, and uh, this also makes it like special. Um, uh, uh, when we think about it from, from this positive perspective. So, um, the, this anisotropy, this is also the key thing which, uh, which uh, Jacques Villiers' team uh, uh, took advantage of and uh, uh, to, to kind of prove this, uh, this uh, altermagnetic anomalous Hall effect basically uh, for the first time, uh, definitely for the first time in the ruthenium dioxide, uh, they took advantage of this um, uh, anisotropic behavior and prepared uh, ruthenium dioxide samples in multiple uh, crystal orientations, in particular this 110, 001, and 110. And here, um, uh, it's, uh, let, let's go through one of these, uh, uh, through these individual cases, and also take advantage of, um, again, some uh, old literature, which um, which studied the, the behavior of the rutile uh, uh, magnets in, um, in, in some sort of vector magnetometry in the bulk form already some time ago. And it um, turns out that when magnetic field is applied along the 110 direction, that uh, um, may be a little bit unintuitive for, for uh, what one would not expect from, from an antiferromagnet. The, the L vector starts to immediately uh, reorient towards the, towards the 110 direction. And also, in the same time, uh, a weak moment is developed along the 001 direction. Therefore, the uh, total net small magnetic moment is in this uh, minus 110 uh, plane um, present. This is the small m, which is, which is shown here. And um, uh, by this geometry, we already see that the anomalous Hall effect immediately when the magnetic field um, starts to be applied can be present. So it will be... Um, it will be immediately when the magnetic field is applied, and we have already contribution to the to the anomalous Hall effect, which should be measured. In the second geometry, we see that the magnetic field and uh, uh, is applied along the easy axis, along the O one direction. And in geometry, this is the, the, the reference geometry where we do not expect um, um, uh, the, the reorientation, and therefore no uh, uh, alter magnetic anomalous Hall effect is expected. In the last scenario, um, um, uh, in principle, the, the, the anomalous Hall effect from the alter magnetism would be possible in case the magnetic field would induce some uh, reorientation of the L vector in the 100 plane. However, um, like a spoiler, it was not observed, and I will touch it a little bit also uh, when I speak about our data on the end. So uh, these are the expectations of uh, what we have, and now let's go to the um, characterization. Um, so one has to be sure to, to, um, to know what is, the, what is the magnetic moment, or basically that the net magnetic moment is indeed tiny. And here we can see that uh, all the three uh, samples, they show um, around 50 milli uh, Bohr magneton per physical unit. Uh, the triple R um, showing like the uh, uh, resistivity shows the, the metallic character um, is approximately three, and the magneto resistance um, is also no, uh, not surprising. It's showing some decrease with um, increasing temperature, similar for all the all the studied sample. Um, and um, here um, one more slide um, before looking at the transport data, and this is very special thing with, uh, with Jikvi uh, Liu team did, and it's very important um, uh, for, for, um, um, for the ruthenium dioxide uh, in general, uh, altermagnetic research, that uh, they have unique opportunity to measure these, this vector magnetometry and to basically perform the, the experiments on thin films, which uh, in this paper were performed in the, in the bulk rutile materials. And confirm the thing which I mentioned that when magnetic field is applied along the 110 um, direction, 
that there is a, a, a net moment developed in the perpendicular O01 direction, which is shown here, that indeed once the magnetic field is applied, on the previous slide I showed you that when one measures the standard squid along the, along the axis, along the 110 uh, moment, that it's sort of increasing as expected. But when one measures the transversal moment here along the, um, along the 001 axis, along the easy direction, that after uh, some time it develops some offset and it kind of increases. So there is a moment build up along this direction and it's absent along the, uh, the second perpendicular direction. And for all these uh, remaining geometries, here we see that the net moment is along the magnetic field. And uh, uh, here it's uh, all the time zero in both directions. It's, it's shown in, in, in their reference. So this is very important thing which um, experimentally verified on the same sample where the anomalous Hall effect was afterwards measured that it indeed has this uh, um, uh, behavior, this un unconventional behavior um, um, of, the, of the alter magnet, which that, they, that it builds this, uh, this small net moment um, uh, from, from finite fields. So now let's, let's look what, uh, what was the, um, what was actually the uh, um, transport data, the transverse magnetoresistance. And here again, we look at the three different orientations which they which they studied. And um, on the first look, we can see that uh, 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 the scenario where we expect the immediate reaction on the external magnetic field uh, um, indeed shows the strongest response, the strongest uh, uh, slope. And uh, uh, the reference one, where we do not expect any anomalous Hall effect, shows only linear uh, slope, uh, mildly changing with temperature, associated with, with, the, with the ordinary, um, ordinary Hall effect. And the same is actually observed here, likely because the, the, the reorientation field is too high to be reached in this uh, 50 Tesla regime. So in these two cases, we see the, the only the uh, um, ordinary Hall contribution. However, he's, here we see the, 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 the anomalous Hall contribution from the alter magnetism consistent with the, with the, with the theory. Here one can also, with, a, with, a, with kind of uh, optimistic thinking, already see some sort of bending of the, of the curve. And this is also where we kind of said, that let's, let's, let's look at it in more details now. We have uh, our samples and let's look at if we can if we can confirm this uh, saturating uh, behavior. So we, uh, we have samples um, from Simon Moser from Wiersburg, um, which were prepared by, by uh, plasma laser deposition. And um, they kind of show a, a, a good uh, crystalline quality. They are approximately 12 to 15 uh, nanometers thin. And we, uh, we follow the, the work of, of Feng by focusing only on the 110 orientation and try to see if we can uh, confirm the, the, the anomalous Hall effect and, uh, uh, for example, also see uh, some, um, uh, some more saturation. So the, uh, the films um, were um, grown, as I said, in this 110 orientation on the titanium dioxide. They show good, uh, good roughness, and here this means that we have the, the, uh, the spins basically in the one, uh, this is the uh, 001 plane, so they are sort of in, in, the, in the sample plane. And then what we do is the, to, to repeat the, uh, the, 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 the systematic uh, characterization. So we look again at the, uh, we fabricate hole bars, we look at the longitudinal resistance and uh, we observe the, the metallic behavior with the triple R around, around three. And then we spend a lot of time again to try to uh, uh, get the, 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 some reasonable um, magnetometry measurements. And um, um, here, um, this is the, the raw data and when uh, subtracting uh, to the, the, the uh, diamagnetism of our substrate to the best of uh, our knowledge, we get um, something which is approximately uh, mm, 10, 20 millibore magneton per physical, physical uh, formula unit. And uh, the uh, routine, uh, the magnetoresistance shows again the, the same behavior uh, decreasing with the, with the uh, increasing temperature. We fabricated two hull bars in two different orientations in the, in the plane. 
and uh, because all the data which I will show, they were kind of same identical for the two measured uh, samples, I will then uh, show it only once. So we didn't observe any um, difference based on the in-plane orientation of, of, uh, of the 110 plane. So, um, so here, let me go directly to the, to the anomalous hole measurement. And uh, um, we took advantage of the, of the Rosendorf facility where we can go almost to 70 Tesla. And we uh, apply the magnetic field along 110 direction. And we, uh, uh, we uh, do, uh, as shown here on the cartoon, we expect that exactly our nail vector is pointing, uh, is tilting towards um, this uh, field direction from the 001 direction and this starts to tilt immediately <clears throat> already when the magnetic field is applied. And what is important in, in our data that it seems that uh, around this crazy field of 50 Tesla, we start to see some, uh, some degree of saturation. So um, it seems that 70 Tesla is to some extent enough to, to, to reach uh, slowly the saturation. And uh, we also look at it at uh, uh, various um, temperatures and um, we start at uh, this very low temperature. Let's say until this um, um, 80 Kelvin, we can still see this saturating behavior. Mm -hmm. However, afterwards, it's uh, very quickly decreasing the, the, the anomalous hole. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, basically not measurable for us at, at, uh, at uh, 200, uh, to above 200 Kelvin. We estimate, so here, the, um, the small part, uh, which is um, uh, remaining after this um, sort of saturation, this we associate with this ordinary uh, hole effect. And um, after subtracting this small part, we um, estimate the upper boundary of the, of the anomalous hole conductivity to be around 2,000 Siemens per centimeter. And uh, although it's like a very rough guess and um, upper boundary, this cannot be uh, um, under any circumstances explained uh, uh, um, with the small uh, magnetometry signal which we measure again as a, as a upper boundary because of all the uh, some, some substrate uh, uh, subtraction. So um, here we confirm the, the, the change of the, the uh, change of the slope strongly already at the zero field. There are small magnetic fields, but also that uh, it's uh, saturating uh, anomalous hole effect in this ruthenium dioxide. We looked also in the temperature dependency and compare it with the with the with the uh, Jiquilio paper and. Uh, 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 we observed like not uh, completely unsimilar behavior that uh, the, the anomalous hole uh, resistance indeed drops down with temperature um, um, above, let's say, 100 Kelvin. This is like much more, much less clean what, uh, uh, what, what we actually measure or we don't see so pro pronounced the saturation, which is in striking contrast to the not so much changing slope in this highest magnetic fields which we have, we, we don't see such a strong uh, variation of the, of the ordinary hole effect. And last, uh, last thing which uh, I want to mention is that when we already had such a high magnetic fields available, we also played around and tried to see if you apply additional magnetic field along the O1 direction, if we cannot achieve any, any mm, mm, spin flop or any reorientation towards the or in this 001 plane. So uh, if we cannot sort of tilt towards more towards this 001 plane to, to increase our, uh, uh, our anomalous hole signal. And for all the hole bars which we had patterned in this, um, in this uh, 110 plane, we could not uh, see any difference when the external magnetic field, additional external magnetic field was applied along the 001 direction. So therefore, we think that uh, um, the, 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 the easy axis was not uh, willing to, to orient further in this, uh, towards this O1 plane. So um, this brings me basically to the conclusion that we uh, confirmed the, the anomalous hole effect presence on samples grown by another team um, measured by another people. We confirmed the saturation uh, 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 when we reached this uh, above 50 Tesla. And we are now confident to go further with some uh, uh, measurements on, on actual devices uh, measuring the actual spin current. Thank you.